So good afternoon to MATB 1110, Calculus 1, January the 5th, 2015. This is the first class in week number one. So let's get started. Good afternoon. Um, I used to take my class lecture and put it on YouTube for my students. So if you like that, you can use my YouTube later. It's a bit hot today. Still working fine. Don't worry, this is not your class. Hello, yes, thank you. Uh, welcome, first of all, this is Fox MATV 1110, section 1, okay, it's called Calculus 1, okay, and uh, this is Dr. Van speaking, I'm from the Faculty of Science and Technology, I know that this is the compulsory course for many of you who come from different majors, right, so you're not necessarily mathematics majors. So, um, it's been a while since I say goodbye to this plan Calculus 1. So I'm so glad that this semester I have the chance to meet Calculus 1 again. And I'm glad to meet all of you in this class. Now uh, when I go over the roster, okay, I think I have um, 20 nice students. Okay, wow, now it's really two. It's increasing. So because I'm late, so more students are coming. I checked it during lunch time, I just got 20 nice students, including me, it's 30. So it's very good that we got over 30 students. So um, uh, this is the UM Moodle environment, and I think many of you know that, right? So we use that environment in many other courses, and I use this environment in every course I teach. So I'm going to teach you Calculus 1. And I'm so glad that I, as I said, I meet this old friend again. It's been a while since I say goodbye to Calculus. Well, anyway, and this is the very first course, okay, in the context of the American system, um, in the context of the Chinese system, many of you may have already learned calculus before, okay? In my personal experience, when I finished my Form 5 in Macau, I already did my calculus, okay? Um, so when I joined the university in the United States, uh, I basically finished all the calculus 1, 2, 3 in one semester almost. Uh, because I know all of these. So I know the differences. Okay, so, but anyway, we, we assume that we need to start from zero. Uh, we need to help you understand the meaning of calculus and the expected learning outcome in this course. Now, today I did not put in a lot of my material yet, except that I framed this in the Buddha environment as the first block. And if you visit the Buddha environment, we do not have the second block, the third block, because I'm going to work this out this week. I got some information from Professor Chiman Zhang, um, who used to teach this course last semester. So I put in here the Learning Center syllabus passed to me by Professor Zhang, and I also put in here a course support website created in Professor Zhang's website. And in this class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce to you the context of Calculus 1 based on Professor Jang's uh, design. And then I will tell you what I'm going to do some adjustment after I print something from you, okay? Now you got a one piece of paper, and we're going to collect some information from you towards the end of the class. Now, before that, let me do some class management stuff. We have from 2.30 to 4 o'clock for this class, but normally the school tells us we need to stop at 3.45. Okay, because they give you enough time to walk to another classroom. So basically, we do not have a 90 minute class, we just have a 75 minute class. Okay, we're going to do something more for that. So um, for me, it's okay, because I used to do this kind of uh, 75 minute class, because a lot of things do not happen just in the classroom. It happens in the Buddha environment. I will, I will give you a lot of the information for this environment, uh, including my notes, um, including the ways of your homework, but, but yes, it's very interesting. I, I think I need to tell you some more. 
I, I, I was informed, I have been informed that I'm two T8s in this class that was so enjoyable. And you need to come to class on Monday and on Thursday for my class. But you need to come to the TA's class on, let me see, Wednesday? Okay, so when you go to the TA's classroom, that is called a tutorial. So traditionally speaking, in the United States, we have lecture, we have tutorial, and we have recitations. And then in lectures, we give you information from the discipline, from the textbook, or from the instructor's material. And in the tutorial, you come to the tutorial with questions, and hopefully you got some answers. Okay, you ask the TA to help you to solve some problems or something like this. All right, so if you know that, it's fine. Well, um, but I'm not so sure yet. Um, who's going to grade your exam in most of the TA? I don't need to grade, that's so good. Um, but I need to check the result. So because of that, I'm so much concerned with my students' work. Uh, this is what I'm trying to do when you submit your homework. Uh, definitely, you used to write your homework on a piece of paper, write the name and submit a piece of paper, right? This is the paper-based way, and you submit to the TA, right? Okay, you do it, you continue to do that, but on top of this, what you need to do is something like this. Um, because I want to keep track of the work in the Moodle environment to make sure that everything you did is highly respected, okay? So before you pass your homework in the context of paper-based homework to your TA, you, you go to the library and then scan through it. Scan it. You see what it's meant by scan, right? You produce a PDF copy of your homework, all right? Okay, you understand what I mean? Uh, and then you submit the PDF copy of your homework through the Moodle environment, okay? Then you submit the paperwork to the TA, the TA will grade the work, okay? But in the meantime, I have a copy. I have an electronic copy of my system. Now this means that you are sure that you submit something, all right? So understand this, right? This is the number one thing I can think about this. Okay, now let me show you a little bit about this. Um, in the Moodle environment, you have the syllabus, you have the support website, which I'm really going to walk you through in a minute. And we have a few songs, definitely, this is your path, you need to go it on your own, okay? We're not going to print the theme songs in this one. And we have a calendar. You can check the, the day when you're going to have holidays. Um, we have the rules on student academic dishonesty, that means you do not copy someone else's homework and submit this to your own, okay? This is very serious, and if you were found doing that, the likelihood is you will be expelled from the university. This is very severe charge. And then we do have the disability support services, so in case you have anything you need, like I'm very much outside, I cannot sit somewhere there, and from the back, and then you can sit on the front, or if you have physical disability, and uh, you need to go in here with the wheelchair, we still can accommodate that. And then we have some tools for you to find the meaning in Chinese with English. To find the meaning in English and English. And if you need help reading and studying English, click on this link. All of these are free of charge, okay? And then we have attendance record by this one. Let me show you how to do that. I think you, you must have experienced that before. In every class, we're going to take attendance. And this is day number one. Wow. Can I read that? Uh, let me call you Zhao, okay? Zhao, are you here? Are you here? Not here? So if you're not here, click on absence. And then Terry, are you here? Thank you. And click on Pini's presence. Eden, thank you. And then with Jason, thank you. And then Kirkwin, thank you. Joy, thank you. Amy. Are you here, Amy? You're not here, so I give you an A. All right, Susie, thank you. Joel, thank you. Thank you, Joel. John, thank you. Shu, um, Shu, thank you. Uh, and then Vivian, Vivian, thank you. And then Song, Song, thank you. And Nisha, Nisha, me, me. Are you here? No, you're not here. Thank God, because I pronounce the name oddly. Nyuala, are you here? Thank you. Uh, Nyo, Nyo, thank you. Uh, Elaine, thank you. Kent, Kent, are you here? Not here? Okay. All right, so Anson, Anson, you're not here, right? And then Sin Han, 
and then he's asked about Kian. And then Kian. Kian is not here. Oh. Simon. Simon is here. Good. And then Angela. Thank you. And then Sting. Thank you. Martin. Thank you. Uh, and then John. Thank you. Susan. Thank you. Ming. Thank you. Flora. Thank you. Um, Nobo. Thank you. Jackie. Thank you. And Tian. Thank you. Okay, I mean, that's it. Any person whose name has not been called? No, okay. So we finished one sequence and also illustrate you how to take attendance. So I say, so your attendance record is on file. Now the next thing I need to show you is, uh, I have not produced any teacher's message yet, but I'm going to give you a teacher's message this week. And mostly I'll give you a teacher's message once every week on Monday, okay? Then to inform you what you need to pay attention to. And here is a social discussion forum for you to express any of your concerns or share anything of your interest to your fellow students. You just need to come here, click on this slide, and then you can type in here the topic. After you finish typing something, you just need to post it to the bar. And all the people in this class could read your message. Okay? And so if you have something you want to suggest for the whole class, you can always come here and post your discussion right. If you just want to respond to it, you just press reply. Okay? So after you press reply, you just say, Alright? So then you will see that the discussions from different people. It's very important because sometimes you might want to inform you something, but you want to inform your fellow students something. This is one method to do it. Well, it's very slow in terms of the connection speed, okay? So I hope I really do have the physical wire connections. Okay, you can see that. This is the important means for communications in the classroom. In, the, in this course. And after that, um, you see there's something called Dr. Vatsky in Close Hotline. It works just like a forum, but it works, it's a dedicated private discussion like with me. When you write here, everyone in the class could read it. When you write here, only you and I could read it. It's just like sending me an email, okay? But I, I prefer you send me something through this line rather than an email, because in the email, in the work of an email, sometimes I will miss it a lot. Here, I mostly check it every day. Um, so, if you send something here, it's okay. And later on in each week, I'm going to give you tools like this too, so that you can use the same tools to keep me informed. Now, let me go back to the syllabus. This is the syllabus um, provided to me by Professor Jan. Okay? And I'm going to do a little bit of the modifications in terms of the assessment scheme. Um, but anyway, the large main syllabus works very um, effectively for this class. So this is Calculus 1, all right? It's offered by the Department of Mathematics from the Faculty of Science and Technology. The course code is MATB110 and it's for year one students, so I suppose all of you are year one students, okay? If you're not year one student, let me know, all right? So it's a compulsory course, it's also called elective. So anyway, it does not require any prerequisite as long as you finish your high school, okay? And it does not require any prerequisite knowledge. So I need to teach you from very basic in case you need it. It's one semester long, it's free credit. That means we have three hours of lecture-based hours every week, um, plus one hour tutorial, which is given here. We do not need to go to the lab, um, but if you'd like to use some software, yes, just like a window environment. So the course description is, 
Um, this course and calculus twos are considered as one, one important body of knowledge for divided into two semesters. It shall provide you, the student, with a solid foundations of one variable calculus. Now, yeah, there is also something called a variable, separate variable calculus, but in this course, we concentrate on one variable calculus. Okay, let's say you do not know what calculus is all about, but that kind of calculus we're dealing with is called one variable, okay? The topics include limit and continuity. These are the name of the topic. Limit theorem and the idea of continuity is basically what we're talking about is continuous function. Derivative, which is something called a transform of the original functions and its applications and how we're going to use that transform. A derivative is another form of it. Integral and its applications. Well, in, interestingly speaking, integral and derivative, they work hand in hand with one another. You derive it, you integrate it. Okay, so it's, you, you, put, you, you put things apart, you put things together, all right? Uh, the applications and why we need that, in what way we're going to interest in that. So these are the ideas. So it's not much, but it will take you three to four months' time to get the basics done. So we can see this is a very basic course. And if you want a much more precise descriptions of your learning objective, only three. Uh, to introduce you, the student, the fundamental theories of calculus. Okay, there is something called calculus, and in contents of calculus, there is something basic you need to learn. In each one of those basic things, if we would like to use the big term called theory to describe it, there is something you need to learn, all right? So I'm trying to put things as simple as possible. Now, I've not told you, I've not told you what calculus is all about. Be able to formulate and solve problems using derivatives. So you also should have the ability to formulate, that means to write in a very specific format with your own idea. The ideas behind calculus applications and use that formulation to solve problems. And to solve problems with what tools? A hammer, a screwdriver, the tool is called derivatives. Derivative is something you derive it from something else, okay? Okay, you, you, you have some sugars here. And when you add water into the sugar, when the sugar dissolves, it becomes sugar water. So the sugar water is, comes from the sugar and the water. So you're using the, the, the ingredients, sugar and water, in a way that it becomes sugar water to solve a problem. What kind of problem? Drinking. You quench by thirsty. Okay, to increase your body energy. To be able to formulate and solve problems using ink work. So basically, you need to learn how to express something concisely using the theories from calculus and use that theory to solve problem. One, the two is called derivative. Second, the two is called integrals. Okay? So as I said, uh, the derivatives and integrals seems to be two different things. Okay? Uh, put things apart, put things together. All right, so objective, we got it through. Of course, there's still a lot of question. This is the beginning of the journey. The learning outcomes. So this is the teacher's expected statements of accomplishment. And this is what the student need to demonstrate in order to um, convince me, your teacher, that you got it, okay? So I, I give you what, it, what, what is required for you to understand and you pass it back to me, proof or evidence of the learning, through the work you did, for example, your homework, your midterm exam, your quizzes, your final exam, the way you manage to master the skills of problem solving through formulations using derivatives, using integrals, okay? So important conclusions of this course, student expected to, or at the end of this course, student are supposed to be able to do Number one, understand is not a very good term, but anyway, understand and be able to evaluate limits, okay? Or better say, um, enumerate the method used to evaluate limits. Understand and be able to find the derivatives of functions. Okay, then another trick comes in. Derivatives of function means derivative comes from something called function. The 
ask the question, what is a function? Okay, these two become very similar. You understand something, and because of your understanding, you are able to do something, and that something is to evaluate Nimit, and that something is called find the derivatives of the functions, okay? And number three, you are able to use the derivative of a particular function in applied problems, that means in solving problems. Again, understand and be able to find the integrals of functions, okay? From functions, you have something called derivative. From function, you have something called the integrals, okay? And you should be able to find, find, what does it mean by find? Work it out. Use mathematical principles of the technique you're going to learn. To find the derivative of functions, to find the integrals of functions, and also to use the derivative in a prime problem and to use an integral in a prime problem. So basically, how many things do you need to know? You need to know calculus in the context of some specific functions, the many different kind of functions. And when you are able to identify function, you should be able to use a method to find the derivative of functions. You should be able to use the method to find the integral of the functions. And once you got the derivative, or once you got the integral, you can use the derivative or integral to solve the problem. That's it. Okay. Do you know what is it? So just like you go to Silam, see, you are going to learn Tik Tan Tik. All right? Right? And this is a kind of Kung Fu you need to learn. And what can you do after you learn Kung Fu? You can behave like any kid, Jack Lee. In what sense? Pray Kung Fu movie. Okay, but we don't care about that, we just talk about Kung Fu now, okay? All right, so Kung Fu number one, Kung Fu number two, Kung Fu number three, four, five, all right? So, text of references. Now this book, as you can see, is considered as the text of the semester. It's highly recommended you buy the book because from the book you're going to work out problems. And this is the book for your reference, and I tell you what, this is the book, not the light edition that I used to learn calculus, all right? So that's why I say, oh, I need my old friend again. All right, so according to Professor Jennings' scheme, 10% uh, is for assignment, 15% for quizzes, the midterm is 25%, and the final is 50%. What do you think? Great. How many of you say, yet for rooms of improvement? Can you make it better? Any suggestion? Oh, great. In class? In class? Or after class? Those quiz? I think it's mostly during the tutorial. Yeah. In class, we seldom take quizzes. Okay. So if you, you have quizzes during tutorial hours, assignment mostly done at home, or you can bring questions back to the tutorial and ask questions. Midterm. Maybe midterm is done in class, okay? Final exam, okay? So 50%. Now, I, I, I give you a little bit of my personal experience. When I was a student learning calculus, um, I got some inspirations from my teacher who would like me to do something on my own. And besides doing the assignment homework, definitely you need to do the assignment homework because if you don't practice, you never know you got the skill. So practice using a problem it's very important. But beside practice, there is something that, that is even more important before you do the practice. That is called note taking. But normally you take notes from the teacher, you write on the right one. Okay? I took notes for my teachers too. Okay? So another important context of note taking is to take note from your reading. Okay. So um, I show you I show you this notes, okay? Uh, when I was informed that they could teach calculus, I go back to my library. This is only one of the ten packs of notes I got. And when I read the day of my notes, can you read it? The day of my notes? Let's see. This is the notes taken more than 30 years ago. Can you read the dates? 1985. That is when I took calculus. Okay, I took this notes, and because of this notes, I earned more than 50% of the final grade. Because professors encourage us to take notes, not just from his notes. I took notes after reading three textbooks, 
my companion, the discussions of three different authors, um, telling us the story of theory of limits, derivative, and integrals. And I passed this stuff to my professor. He said, with all full respect, I cannot touch your notes, but I will give you all the credit you deserve. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, when I say I'm going to give you a chance to uh, adjust this a little bit, normally, we sign assignment, we sign quiz, midterm exam final in the traditional disciplinary course with projects. Okay, but in my in my course, I have one specific item which I would like to add into it that is called the learning to learn activity. Okay. Now, if you took any of my other courses, you know that I, I used to add learn to learn activity. I encourage my students to learn on their own. So what I'm trying to figure out is, I would keep this free the same, but I'm going to take 10% out of the final exam and add that 10% to the learn to learn activity. And the learn to learn activity means you need to take notes on your own, okay? For a specific topic of interest, you need to take notes. And if you show me the notes, because you need to scan it, okay, to submit it, I will give you credit based on the 10%, or sometimes more than 10%. So, it, but it's optional, it's not compulsory. If you, if you want to take that part, uh, if suppose I call this plan A, okay, I call this plan A, okay, I give you plan B. Plan B is assignment 10%, quiz 15%, midterm 25%, and then Learn to learn activity, not taking 10% and then final 40%. Okay? That means I encourage you to take notes. Right? So this is very important. Um, it's very important, it's very valuable. When I saw to my son, this is the dad's work more than 30 years ago. Can you read that? Oh yes. He reads it. Okay, and because of that, I do not need to be there. I just took my notes out and they read it for one evening and then, oh, this, this comes back to the whole family. Because I took notes. This is my knowledge. Okay? Do you read me? Not. <laughs> okay, what I'm trying to tell you here is, this is the assessment, okay, that is provided by Professor Jack. But I'm going to offer you my way, okay? And I call this plan A, and I offer you plan B. Okay, the difference between part A and part B is final exam is 40% in part B and the 10% taking out offer you to learn to learn activity which is not taking. Okay, and you must produce your notes in order to earn that. Alright, this is just one quick suggestion. Well, alright, so let's go on. So, learning outcome assessment. Assignment, quizzes, midterm, and final exam in the plan B. Assignment, quizzes, notes, midterm, and final exam. All right? This does not reduce any significance of the original design, but I have to use some, um, what we call the simple <coughs> scheme for those hardworking students who welcome it. And many of you are hardworking. All right. So, let's go on. Now, the pedagogical means uh, used by Professor Jang in helping me to learn calculus in this class as opposed to lecture. You know, good lecture is very important. But for me, because I'm, I'm computer science and software engineering people, I will also give you e-learning stuff. Uh, you, might, you might see some calculus lessons from maybe UC Berkeley. I could bring some UC Berkeley lessons here and let you see them. Uh, I can bring some Stanford, some MIT lessons, and you can see that here, right? So this will give you, uh, yes, exercise and problems, right? Some inspirations of how your standing and learning calculus is compared to other students in other universities around the world. And then the assignment method here, as you can see, is just the repetitions of the um, intimations given to you. So. I would just add note taking here as others, so I'll give you 10% and reduce this for 40%. Okay? So that is very interesting. So this is the patent of week number one introductions. I give you some review on functions, the idea of the tangent lights and slope predictors. Alright? What do you mean by that? Alright. 
So the second Greek, limit and continuity. Okay? The concept and operations of limit, the concepts of continuity. We've got the free, the derivative, the beginning of the calculus, derivative and the rate of change, the basic differentiation rule, the chain rule, derivative of algebraic functions. I get these are topic. You can easily find it in your textbook, all right? And then the applications of derivative for weeks number four and five, optimize, op optimizations of closed intervals, and prime optimization problems, derivatives of trigonometric functions, Newton's method, all right? Uh, for those of you who have gone through the high school, and particularly those from the science subject, you know that uh, you learn some basic ideas of Newton's law, but also the trigonometric functions, which are hundreds of years old. Oh, by the way, I still keep my high school trigger book, which I can show you, which is more than 60 years old. Um, I love this book very much. More applications of derivatives, so differentials, and mini approximations, uh, increasing and decreasing functions, the mean value theorem, first derivative test, curve sketching. So these are what we call the basics in the university. And then the midterm exam, all of these topics, and after the midterm exam, we come to the empty row, week 10, 11, and 12, and time derivatives, so the empty row, and time derivatives, one put things apart, one put things together. It is a value problem, elementary area computations, okay, how do you use any to count the area? Write the sums and the empty row, evaluations of empty rows, Fundamental theorem of calculus, wow, this time the big name. Integrations by substitutions. These are the method name, area of prime regions, numerical integrations. And then finally, is the applications of the Hindi group. Reitman summed approximations, forms by method of cross sections, method of cylindrical shells, arc length and surface area revolutions. Looks like do you, are, you, are you from a scientific background? Do you know what these means? No? I'll give you some picture. All right, I'll give you some picture. Lecture lock from as an integral, inverse trigonometric functions, I have one function, time of exams. Okay, anyway, if you don't know this, it's okay. No one knows all of these. You're here to learn. I'm not here to scare you, but I'm here to encourage you to learn and try to make things interesting for you. So, all right, now this is the syllabus, and this is the statement that this university supports students with disability. Okay, so let's go back to the website. So this is the website. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? You could continue this. Oh, yes, sure, sure, sure. If you're looking for, could not be found on the website. Really? Okay, I'll make sure that the website here is okay. So don't worry much about this. So let's try to do some exercise now. Now you have a piece of paper, okay? Now I would like you to imagine what is meant by calculus at this point. No matter how much you understand what I just said. Put in that piece of paper, maybe a picture, which describes what you're thinking, maybe some statements of writing, which you know from your past experience, but make it brief, make it concise, what is meant by calculus. Try to answer this question. Or you can just say, what is calculus? And then try to answer. You may draw a picture, and you may write something. What is in your mind about calculus? You just have three minutes time to do it, okay? At most five minutes. And in the meantime, that means that means try to solve the the problem of the website.
those of you who are finished, definitely you can take a peek at this calculus, the definitions from Wikipedia. Now you know that Wikipedia is a very common tool for us to discover something not to our understanding, and even kindergarten kids know how to use it. So if you have no idea what calculus is all about, very basic idea of it, well, you, you don't trust it 100% because um, you have to use the, the great map in your brain to read it. And, but at least it has some very interesting discussions uh, from the Wikipedia is that calculus is the mathematical study of change. 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 In the same way that geometry is the study of shape. Shape. And algebra is the study of operations and the application to solving equations. Uh, very interesting. So when we talk about calculus, the key term is change. When we talk about <coughs> geometry, the key term is shape. When we talk about algebra, the key term is operations and application to solve equations. So it has two major branches, differential calculus and integral calculus. That's what we're going to learn, derivative, and integrations. Again, okay? when we talk about differential calculus, it talks about the rates of change and slopes of curves. The rate of change and slopes of curves. What is meant by rate of change? Each one of us, as a human being, is constantly changing. I'm 50 years old this year, which is quite different from 25 years old, or 20 years old when I first studied calculus. So when I meet my old friend, I take a look at the rate of change, I look at my picture 30 years ago and now, I, I have some white hair, okay? I look a little bit fat. Uh, and so the rate of change, slow, but visible. Okay, okay. The slopes of curves, curves. Well, I think this is a very good campus, but if you remember our old campus, a lot of curves, okay? If you walk up the curves, up and up and up, is a very good exercise every day. And have you ever mastered the slope of change of that curves? And in Tico Calculus, talks about the accumulations of quantities and the areas under it between curves. So if I happen to have a 2D plane here and I draw any curve, that the line to count the area under the curve, what are you going to do? Chop it into small pieces and take each strip as a rectangle, right? And you count the square <coughs> and you the rectangle, add them together. Except there's some small differences, right? So basically the idea is that the accumulations of quantities and the areas under and between curves. These two branches are related to each other by the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what is meant by fundamental theorem of calculus? It got to be something, right? Which links up the differential calculus and the integral calculus. Both branches make use of the fundamental notions of convergence of infinite sequences, <coughs> infinite series. Wow. That means if you want to know something about calculus, you need to know something about the infinite sequences and the infinite series. What is meant by that? Have you remember the GP, the AP, and the HP in your high school? Not yet? Oh, great. I'm going to introduce these good friends to you later. The GP means geometric series. The AP means arithmetic series, and the HP means the harmonic series. These are good friends, all right? Now, uh, to well-define the limit, because they are not definite, all right? So, generally, modern calculus is considered to have been developed in the 17th century. This is the 21st century. But what we are now studying calculus is the stuff about two to three hundred years ago. <laughs> You see? How great we human beings are, we still studying something said about 100 years ago by Isaac Newton and Godfrey Leibniz. Okay, there's two good friends. Isaac Newton, you know him. 
Apple is dropping in the head and it thinks about a lot of things that Newton's small emotions. Lay lips, okay? Today, calculus is widespread uses in science and engineering economics. That's why you're from different major science, okay? Engineering, like me, and economics today we use a lot of calculus and can solve many problems at okay, let me see what this one. Okay, forget. That algebra alone cannot, okay? So I've given you a a pretty good pictures about calculus today. So two branches of calculus you're going to learn, differential calculus and integral calculus. But in calculus one, we mainly talk about differential calculus. In calculus two, you can you learn something more about integral calculus. Okay. But in order to study calculus, we need to come down to the basics. That's why I come up here. I go to calculus.com. You can always learn calculus online. And today, I'm going to show you what is a function, basics and key terms. Okay, watch. Introduction to functions. Let's see, do we have enough science? Science. <laughs> Let's see as well. Oh, but anyway, uh, let's see. What is this science here? <clears throat> but you can't uh, read it. This is what is meant by that. It's just a couple of minutes of the, well, let's just watch it. Those are functions. <coughs> Maybe I have to do some dubbing, just like Ding Dong has been doing. Let me just thank you. You do not need any sounds, and then you give me some sound. Uh, what is meant by functions? It's um, hypothetical machines which take some input and produce some output. And in the box of the machines, there's some kind of processing. Okay? This is the input output context of understanding the functions. So, a function is basically this is like a magic box where you are going to input something in the form of x. And this magic box is going to process that something called x and produce an output which is called y or f of x. Okay? So uh, what you saw here is if I drive my car into gas stations and I read the price per gallon uh, of um, a net gasoline, so I just take a look at how much I can accommodate for my gas tank. So I say, let me see, let me get in 8.3 gallons there. So now I'm going to have 8.3 gallons and for the amount of um, price per gallon that I need to pay a total of this much, you know all of these. So what we have to talk about here is from the perspective of X, we call this the domain, all right? The domain of values to be input to the machines and from the perspective of y, which is the f of x, we call this the range. The range of value produced from the different values of the domain. So this is basically the ideal function. And we call this a variable because it can change. And as a change, 
this value is going to change. So this is a one variable function. Okay? And let me see if I could, uh, here we go. Um, this is what we call the basic cause to learn something which is always free of charge. And if you like, you can always sign for free and try it for five days and learn all the basics. And what are you going to learn? A lot of things. Again, let me just show you. A lot of things, so lesson one, what is a function, the basics and key terms. Lesson two, how do you graph the basic functions? Lesson three, how do you compound the functions together, several functions put together, one contain the other, and graph the functions of functions. Just like I have a big machine which contain a number of small machines, and each of the small machine functions, and so the big machine functions together when you drive a car, the calculator, the gets the accelerator, the braking system, and the lighting system all functions together. You understand and graph the inverse functions. How do you, what is meant by inverse function? Turn the machines upside down. Can I input the y and get the x? Now I input the x, did you get the y? So the x is three gallons. So you two dollars per gallon is six dollars. Can I get the six? And get three? Sure. As long as you design your machines. And then something called polynomial functions. You know that? Polynomial. Poly means more than one. More than one form of the variable. Like x to the power of three plus two times x to the power of two plus one times x plus an integer. And then exponential, the logarithm, the lecture logarithm. The slopes and tangents on the graph. Equations of life using positive formula. Horizontal and vertical accentos. Accentos. These are for friends. Okay? Um, and then implicit functions. 11 lessons. At the end of watching the video, you can take the quiz and learn if you can get the concept. Today, you don't need to come to the university to learn calculus free of charge on the website. It's on the internet. My kids are learning things like this on there. Okay, so and then you have the second chapter on continuity. All right, the third chapter in geometry and trigonometry, so scientific calculations, limit rate of change, all the basics on calculus. I see. So in today's class, the first class has given you a perspective and also given you some very good resources here. I will put that in a good environment so that you can. Try it on your own, just like my looks. Okay? Alright, so let's take a look at the time. I have 10 more minutes. Alright, let me bring you back to the Buddha environment. Let's see. Right here. Okay, now, what you can see here in the Buddha environment is the layout of the 14 weeks. Each week, you can see that I just used the head box. Okay, and I'm going to fill out the, the first week, my first day, and then I'm going to help you understand calculus, first from my perspective, through the textbook, and also from the perspective of some very good resources from the web today, okay? And your job, well, actually today I'm going to show you, but I discovered that Professor Jen's website Maybe it's in the process of modification, so we can't get through, all right? I will try to answer it. Um, but if not, then I'm going to design something directly from the textbook, all right? That would be good enough. Now, let me, uh, let me take a look at your paper, okay? And, um, and could you give me back the paper after, that, after the class? If you care to write down your name, Feel free to do it, but you don't need to write out your name. What I need is just take a look at your perspective. And um, can I ask you some questions? If you have any question you want to ask me, feel free to raise your hand. Because in my class, uh, it's very hard for me to do all the talking all the time. I'm trying to see your faces and see if you understand what it's meant by that. Actually, camera is not hot at this level. We just learned something said 100 years ago. This is mature mathematics and a lot of applications today, and you can learn it through the channel. 
not directly from me, and you can always get something done, all right? So any questions, I will be here answering your questions. Do I need to do to, to get an A? <laughs> what do I need to do uh, to pass the course? How many homework do I have to finish? What if I fail one? What, what, what is going to happen? So, I try to combine my old experience of learning with the 21st century context of teaching. So, so yeah, using two screens and uh, using some resources to try to inspire you to try something like that. It's not that difficult. But down to earth things, you must take notes, okay? Both in class and at home, okay? Practice exercise. Okay, let me turn the page here. Now, stop me if you have questions, okay? Let me turn the page. This is the table of content, all right? Let me zoom in from your textbook, okay? So can you see that? Can I focus on that? Yeah. We're going to um, help you understand from chapter 1 to chapter 6, okay? Anything beyond chapter 6, starting from chapter 7 onward, it's the era of calculus 2. Okay? It's the era of calculus 2. So, functions, graphs, and models is the area of chapter 1. Remember, on this side, I just showed you the website where you can learn all of these at your own page. Okay? Through the resources given. Most of these are free of charge, but if you care to pay a small amount of price per month, then you can get all the excellent material. And then the second chapter is new to calculus, okay? So maybe it's a little bit of the limit. And the third chapter is the derivative. The fourth chapter is the applications of the derivative. The fifth chapter is the integral. And the sixth chapter is applications of the integral, okay? You got an idea of what you're going to study. So these are the six chapters of work in this textbook that you need to be responsible for. And if I were you, I would buy the textbook, at least start reading, and do some basic note taking, and uh, got through some of these uh, ideas so that um, you do not need to uh, be worried about the specific thing. And look, when I gone through this chapter, uh, I discovered that the author of this book is very concise, and they give you a lot of very interesting ideas and very good examples. And you need to argue with yourself, do I have enough background to understand some basic notations by the absolute um, the values and those domains and intervals? We're going to start helping you understand this on um, first thing, okay? American textbook is quite famous for giving you more than enough for you to understand something simple. If you look at the British text, it's very concise, it will not give you anything more than what is needed. Um, but you can have a different perspective here, all right? <clears throat> Any other questions? Sure, the tutorial. You need to know who the TA is. I need to know who they are too, but go also. Because I'm supposed to be here today, but if you're not here today, then maybe I have to go on Wednesday to know who they are. I just got the names. Yes? How can I get the books? What? How can I get the books? How do you get the books, right? You go to the bookstore, which is at Mui Sui Fong. Uh, an AP bookstore, you can buy the book there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll show you to buy the book or so we learn academic grammar. 
Well, because I will assign questions for the textbook. So if you do not buy the textbook, be sure you can find the textbook in the library, and you can also make photocopy of that. Yeah, this is one way to solve the problem: expensive textbook. Or you can have a, what we call a pool buy. Four person buy one textbook, and you you do it on um, photocopy of the necessary exercise, and it's much more convenient. Yeah, I will not force you to buy the textbook. Any other questions? I will not assign homework today because when you see my syllabus, I will also. Uh, actually, Professor Jen's website has already assigned homework there, which when I finish reading it, I think it's good. But unfortunately, today it's closed. But it's okay, I'm going to give it to you. Yes. Any other question? Oh, yes. How many of you are from mainland China? Could you raise your hand? Most of you are from mainland China. Okay. So only a small number of you. Uh, so when you when you study your high school in mainland China, you say you study something like this before, right? Right? So basically it's not a typical course. But maybe in, in China you study in Chinese. Now it's English, right? So because we need to have some international experience in that. Alright? So thank you very much. I see you on the first day here, but I will also see you maybe tomorrow in the car. Okay. All right. Um, hope you have a nice class today. Please leave a piece of paper um, saying on this table. All right. I will take it up from you. When you go, please leave on this table. All right. So that's it for today's. Calculus 1, MATB 110, Section 1, the very first day of class, of January the 5th, 2015. And do this first day, stay tuned.